Now today we're looking at the fuel tank pressure sensor. Just last week we looked at the EVAP bypass solenoid. Now we're jumping over to this guy today. So this is part of the EVAP or the emissions system for your vehicle. And it, it just keeps track of the pressure within the fuel system. So if there's a small evaporative leak, the check engine light would turn on your dashboard and say, hey, take a look at this. So it may be the sensor, it could be a broken hose. So it could be a couple of different things, a wiring issue. So let's first start by going over on how to test this. And then later on, I'll show you how I removed it from the vehicle. So like I stated earlier, this is part of the EVAP or emission system. So this is the EVAP canister. This is the shutoff valve, two-way valve, bypass solenoid, and the fuel tank pressure sensor. I'll have a playlist in the description box below in case you want to see any of these previous videos regarding the emission system. So to get access to this, we can rotate this and find two Phillips size fasteners that we need to remove. Now when you remove these, you don't want to strip them. So place down quite a bit of pressure. Take your time. And there we go. Now if you do strip these, chances are you can just grab a Dremel, make a little slit, and then use a flathead to remove the fastener. Okay then these hoses can be quite old in this case it's 21 years old so they are going to be very very stubborn to remove so what I have these are uh, pliers made specifically to remove hoses purchased off Amazon and I'll have a link in the description box as always if you do need any tools so what this does it clamps around it and then just rotate it Okay. Oh, and there you go. So now we can place this assembly to the side and just focus on the pressure sensor here. So right off the bat, you first want to check the hoses. In other words, this could be perfectly fine. You could just have a ripped hose. Now in my case, this car is 21 years old but, and the check engine light is not on. I'm just doing this as a how-to. But if we take a look at the bottom here, Actually, let me remove it. You can see that we have some cracking. So obviously, I'm going to replace this hosing. And if you're curious on the size, let's say, for example, you're doing this in the late evenings, as I tend to do off camera, and you're, you just want to order the parts online, a digital caliper, a really nice little tool to have, because now we can quickly find out the thickness, which is roughly 5 millimeters, and then order the hose online, maybe a foot, so that's roughly 3 sixteenths of an inch if you want to convert it. And now we know the size. And that's it. So if you have Amazon Prime, within a day or two, you have the hose at your doorstep and you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, but first check the hoses. But let's assume the hoses are in good shape. How do you test the sensor? Now, a lot of times on modern cars, again, on this 21-year-old uh, S2000, you need a very sophisticated scan tool, very sophisticated tool to monitor this sensor but there is a workaround on how you can do this at home now let me share with you what i have here chances are if you watch this channel you're a gearhead you maintain and work on your own vehicles you probably have some if not all of these tools so right here is a digital multimeter very easy to use it costs twenty dollars off amazon as always i will have a link in the description box below again very very easy to use this is a vacuum pump. This is roughly $33, again, off Amazon. I've had this thing for at least a decade. If you've never used one of these, super simple. You just pump the handle. That's it. And you'll see precisely what we're going to do with this. And then over here on the right is a probe kit. And in the past, uh, I, I've always stated you can try using a paper clip for what you're about to see. In this case, a paper clip just won't do the job. You really need something that's small enough let's see small enough to probe the back of the wiring and you'll see exactly what we're going to do now the flip side to all of this is a very sophisticated scan tool just to give you an example this is a higher end or i should say a more expensive tool uh, this is probably around 170 dollars or so abs airbags steering angles a whole bunch of stuff you can do with this 
but still it's not sophisticated enough to read this sensor. So the flip side, after watching this, if you don't want to be bothered with this, you can try just going to the local dealership and just ask them to test it for you by all means and just you know get some kind of proof of printout of what, what this sensor is doing. But really, if you plan on working and maintaining on your own vehicles, these are must-haves. Less than 70 bucks, you're ready to go. So now we're going to jump underneath the vehicle. And before we do that, I'm just going to quickly show you what I'm doing. Sometimes it's a little hard underneath the car to get everything on one shot. So very quickly, again, multimeter. Every meter, they have two leads, a black lead and a red lead. Okay, this is ready to go. That's it. Now the setting that we want is volts. So you just find that setting. So in this case, it's right here. Just make sure you see volts DC, okay? AC is household current, you don't want that. Volts DC, this is ready to go, that's it. Okay, next is our probe kit, which I already took out of the box or the case here. So I'm just plugging, so right here are the probes and then we have these connector wires. You just plug it in, this is good to go. And then I'm just going to grab this, this end, and it will simply connect to the multimeter at the red lead. Okay? And I'll give you another shot underneath the car, but just so you can see what I'm doing. And then the vacuum pump. Now the vacuum pump does include a number of different adapters along with tubing. Now this is a little too short, so what I have is an extra hose here. This is probably a good uh, maybe two feet to 30 inches in length and this just makes it super easy when I do these videos it's not necessary it just makes it easier for me to put this down and gives me more working room okay so now this is ready to go let's jump underneath the vehicle so I have the multimeter ready to go on the volts DC the black wire I have to body ground now a really good spot is the spring for the handbrake so I just have the probe, or the lead, the black lead, directly at that spring. It holds it in place. Okay, so that's my body ground. And then looking where the sensor lives, look back up here. So right here is where the EVAP canister lives, which you'll see in a moment. And then on top of the canister is where the fuel tank pressure sensor lives, so which I have right here. Okay, now I just want to plug this back in to the harness connector. See if I can get this, hold on, let me put the camera down here. Okay, so have everything plugged back in, and this is where the probe kit comes into really, into play here, as opposed to a paper clip. If you look at the back, or the rear of the harness connectors, fitting a paper clip back there, you could do it, but it's just, you need a very, very small paper clip. I wouldn't even do it, to be honest. I would just use one of these kits. It just makes all the difference in the world. So we have three wires. We don't know which wire to touch. So let's just do one at a time. Now really there's two things we're doing here. The first thing is verifying that power is getting from the harness connector or to the harness connector. So we should see roughly five volts on the multimeter. So I'm just going to take the probe, I have to put the camera down for this, but I'm taking the probe and I'll insert it into this yellow wire first. Okay, so just going to insert this first. And you just stop once you start to feel resistance. You'll feel a small resistance, but eventually once you, inside here you have a metal bullet connector. And once you hit that, you really can't do anything else with, with this lead. So right here I have resistance. This is far enough. I don't want to damage anything. And then I'm just taking, let me show you. I have, this is the lead running to that probe. This is the red lead to the multimeter and just touching them. Let's turn on the ignition key and see if we have a reading. So now we need to turn on the ignition key. We're not starting the car, but before we do that, I just want to remove the cap for the fuel tank. Okay. Grab the keys here. Again, don't start the car. 
So as you can see, we have a five volt reading. So that tells us that we are getting power to this harness connector. Now to test it, we want to see a lower reading off the bat. You want to see roughly two and a half volts. So let me put this down. I'll try to put this down and keep you uh, centered here just to show you what I'm doing. Again, if I had multiple cameras and a crew here, you can see this better along with the lift, but I'm just doing this at home. So here we go. So I'm just removing this wire, this probe I should say, okay. Let's try this one on the far end, and I'm watching the meter. And right now I have two and a half volts, so that's the one we want, okay? So you see how we have two and a half volts? And then I'm taking the rubber line, this is from the vacuum pump, which you'll see in a second, and just plugging or connecting to this larger outlet on, let me just show you, on the sensor, okay? So just like this. And now what I'm going to do is apply vacuum. Very, very little vacuum. Do not, do not apply a lot because you can damage the sensor. And as you apply vacuum, you want to watch the multimeter and the voltage should go down. Now watch how little I'm doing this. Very, very little. Right now I'm at 2.5, okay? 2.2, 1.8 very very little and if the voltage goes down as you apply vacuum the sensor is good okay so let me do this that's my multimeter telling me it's going to shut off but hold on watch very little vacuum see how it goes down 1.6 so on and so forth do not go past 1.5 volts that's good enough I'll do it one more time so as you can see this is a working sensor. Now just to show you this one last time before I clean this up, I have the probe going to the back of the harness connector that runs to the red lead to the multimeter. Okay, that's it. Black lead goes to body ground. So in that case, that's the spring I have for the handbrake. It could be a heat shield cover. You want a really good metal point on the body or on the vehicle. And then, vacuum pump, just a rubber line running directly, let me remove this, uh, I don't want to break it, it's a little hard with one hand, there we go, okay, directly into the larger opening, and this is the vacuum pump, and you're just squeezing the handle, but again, on this sensor, very little, this is all I was doing, and as you can see, the voltage dropped, and that's how you can test the sensor at home. And that's how you can test one of these sensors at home. I know it's a little bit more involved than normal. You have the multimeter, you have the probing kit, and the vacuum pump. So you have a couple of things going on, but it really is not difficult. In my mind, I want to know precisely what's wrong before the flip side just buying the part blindly and hopefully it fixes the problem. Now, if you are going to do that or you need the part, you've tested it and it's shot, always purchase the factory part okay so in this case you can see it's a denzo part made in japan always buy the factory stuff in other words it's not autozone advanced auto parts or riley i'm not saying all of their stuff is junk the way i see it is over time i tend to keep my cars seven eight years the factory parts will outlast the aftermarket parts every time and they're just designed better they're engineered better for certain vehicles. So always go with the factory part. So what I'm going to do now is splice in a video showing on how I got access to this. But I had to, you'll see in a second, you gotta drop the canister and then everything sits up on top near the fuel tank to get access to this. And that's all it takes. So as always, I hope this helps a number of you out there. I have one more video for the EVAP system. And then I think we'll jump over to the uh, air pump system. I'll, I've never done any videos on that, so I think we'll do that. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll see what comes up after that. But as always, thank you for watching. Now I'm going to start by removing the EVAP canister. It simply cleans up the entire area, and then we'll have better access to the valves. Now the EVAP canister is simply held in by one 12 millimeter fastener. And then on the other end, it's simply it simply slides into that bracket. Oh.
Okay, two more lines to remove. We have this line and then the main, this is the main line that runs to the fuel tank. These can be a little hard to remove sometimes. There's a tab, you press down on the tab hard, then you, get, you have to pull back. So once again, I'll use the pliers, the hose removal pliers, just to break loose any hoses here. And then again, this one, press really hard. Okay, there we go. So make sure everything is disconnected along with harness connectors and just gently pull it back. And there is the EVAP canister. And with that canister removed, they also removed the tire to get some more light filtering in here. We have a much better access and uh, viewpoint of what's going on here. So our two-way valve and then over here is where the bypass solenoid is. So let's remove it from the mount. This one here, another one right here. Let's see. Just slide it off. And then there's actually two things going on here. Up top, that is a fuel tank pressure sensor. And then this is the connection for the bypass solenoid valve. So I'm going to disconnect both. At the 12 o'clock position, there's a tab. Press down on the tab and pull on the body. I'll, ha I'll have to put the camera down to hold this in place. So I just had to put the camera down there for a moment to remove these two harness connectors again. You see how there's a tab? Press down, pull back. Press down right here and pull back.